Hey, what's going on guys? Double One Eight Set Shadow here. The time has finally come. We are about to enter the World Finals for BCS 2022 this weekend, starting on the 28th in LA. If you're hanging around the LA area over the weekend, it's at a convention center out there. I can't remember which one exactly, but they are allowing for general attendees to observe and do some side events, so if you have the opportunity, check it out. It's a free event as well, so you don't have to pay to get in. Yeah, it sounds like I'm advertising for Bushi Road here, but it is cool to take a look at these events, so I've got no incentive other than it's cool to do. Not to mention I still haven't gotten to go to a Worlds tournament myself, so... Yeah, I'm just missing out too much. But anyway, I want to take the first half of my market watch to kind of go over decks that I could see participants playing with or decks that have the potential to top. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these, starting with Lutitia from Lyrical Monasterio Summertime. This is a restand based deck which utilizes orders in order to power itself up and also support all of its support cards. It's a strong contender that has made a few regional tops ever since its release, so it's definitely up there. My Mahar Nirvana is an old, really competitive deck from set 4, which is still very capable today as the only deck that is capable of damaging the Vanguard without having to attack, and it has re-standing rear guards enabling for five attacks on top of that, so it's still very capable and got at least one top during the regional circuit. Greedon is another one to look out for, where this one is a re-standing vanguard by eating up all your rear guards, but with the right combo pieces, you can also perform rear guard attacks in addition to this double attack from the vanguard, and you could even have this card attack three times for six to eight drive checks depending on what combo pieces you have so it's a versatile deck in the types of combos that it can do and it also has the unique gimmick of increasing the amount of damage you need to take to lose the game to seven instead of six it's one it's not it hasn't won any t regionals yet but it has topped a few of them Flagberg is also a pretty strong contender with multi-attack getting up to six attacks in one turn, and it's got great pressure play depending on the number of attacks you perform in one turn, where it can retire your opponent's board as well as force your opponent to guard with a lot of cards or not guard at all in order to conserve resources. A very strong contender that has the potential to see in Worlds. Gravidia Nordlinger is a set order based deck where the meteor capability of this deck is that it will retire your opponent's units while also providing Nordlinger with additional abilities and its strongest ability is that any trigger you check will activate twice. So for those of you who are familiar with the concept of checking all triggers during your drive checks, Nordlinger reduces the necessity for that by turning your double crit into a single crit that is now activated twice, or the same thing with a double heal. It's only on the drive check though, so you can't sack this on your damage check. But if you check the over trigger on offense with this effect enabled, it is basically game over. It's very, very hard to get around the over trigger with this card's effect in play. It is more of a luck-based deck overall with a control aspect, though, so I'm not too sure if this one will make it to Worlds. Magnolia Elder. This one, I do have to, get, I do have to make a disclaimer. I don't know if the restriction list, which is going into effect tomorrow, will be legal for the World Finals tournament. Basically, that list removed the restriction of Magnolia Elder's restriction with Inlet Pulse Dragon. You were only allowed to play one or the other in the deck. If that restriction is getting removed for Worlds, this deck certainly has the chance to see play over at Worlds. 
it has great card advantage, multi-attack for six attacks in one turn, and great guard capabilities due to Elder's own skill of allowing your back row interceptors to intercept from the back row. It's a strong deck overall. There's a reason it had this restriction put on it in the first place. It was just that popular and that heavily played and topping of a deck in the past. And then you've got Youthberg, which so far has not seen a regional top yet, but that's also because the set that gave this deck the capability to be tier 1 was set 7, which was not legal for any of the regional tournaments. Youthberg is now a very strong contender to top for Worlds, and I feel like is the favorite to win amongst a lot of players. This deck has great capabilities all around, between cycling, great trigger compression in your deck by thinning out your deck, and also stacking if you try to play it with that sort of a strategy in mind, since you can stack the bottom of your deck due to Youthberg's own skill. Yes, it is legal, because it's off a of skill, but it's just overall really strong thanks to the addition of Sequana and Tempest, which gives you drive check pressures that the deck didn't initially have, as well as the ability to give your rear guards a lot more power overall. Then you have Dragonic Overlord The End, which has been a pretty decent contender overall, but with the new promo Drag Ritter Halbe, this card got ridiculously strong. Drag Ritter Halbe accommodates for Overlord The End's drop-off, which is it discards two cards in order to re-stand. Halbe removes that discard two by calling itself from your hand and then getting 5k. So, it's a free booster after your Vanguard attacks. A very powerful card that just made this deck really strong and worlds worthy. And then finally, you've got Fountain of Knowledge Eva, which, thanks to the promo order that we got some regionals back, result of the experiment henceforth, which has also notoriously been $100 for a while, this deck has been seeing a good number of regional tops and victories thanks to that order buffing up the deck's capability which goes between being able to filter your deck, pull out stronger rear guard units with crit pressure, and then the orders themselves just recycle as well as provide you resources because this deck is resource intensive. So it does require a lot more technical play but if you can master this deck, it's very, very strong. And that wraps up my that wraps up my analysis for worlds. So let's go ahead and get into the market watch, starting with Eva. Cause what happened here? What happened here? We're looking at Three listings starting at $28, even though this card for the last few days has been 15 Okay, someone bought a place at 25 each. That's that's insane. 12, 10, 8, yeah. Yeah, if you were looking to pick up Eva, I think you're too late. The card has skyrocketed in price for its base rarity. And with set 8 just around the corner, this weekend is the sneak preview weekend for set 8, by the way. Yeah, I guess it's a combination of that hype and just the team tournaments coming up later in March. Then we've got Carebray from set 7, a generic Cater Sanctuary card that I covered in one of my prior market watches. This card has increased from a general $8, $10 price to $15.00 where we haven't seen too many sales at $15 yet, but we only have listings that high right now before we get to $17 for the listing that has the max quantity at this point. This card still has the potential to keep rising for being a pretty good generic. It looks at the top three cards of the deck, calls the card if it's a grade two or less unit, and then it puts it into your hand if it's not. This is one of the few cards which can look at the top of your deck and add an order to your hand, by the way, because you call it if it's a grade 2 or less unit, 
There's no grade three restriction. If it's an order, you just put it straight into your hand, which is very unique for one of these types of skills. As for the frame rare or the frame frame rare, it's been on a downtrend from 60 to 50 to 40. We're looking at $40 right now for its lowest listings, but given that the triple R is starting to rise more in price, I don't think this can fall out much further as there have been plenty of other FFRs that have already fallen out quite a bit from this set. Then you've also got Fasado, which has been a favorite since the days of Bastion when set 1 first came out, because this card is from set 1. Hasn't been reprinted except as a promotional promo, a prize promo from BSF 2022. This version has never sold, I don't think this has ever sold above $50 if I'm not mistaken, at least not on TCG Player. But the double R that you can pick up from set 1 there is a $2 listing, but it's mostly $4 to pick up right now. As I mentioned, it is a Set 1 card, and Set 1 is almost two years old now. So it's no surprise that it's creeping back up in value. This thing used to be above $10, by the way. The SP is... let's see here, because we're low on listings of it, and we're looking at $12. Someone bought it for $24. We've got $12 listings, but not too many of them. So if you want SP Fasados, this might be your chance to pick them up, seeing as they are rising in market price in general. Forktail from set 5 is also rising again in value. When Shuten Doji got announced for set 8 reveals from Japan, this card initially spiked to $20. It fell back up for a little while, but it's back up and crossed the $20 point a bit more consistently and now has mostly $25 listings. So if you've got copies of these, there are only seven listings right now. You have the potential to get rid of these around the $20 mark. And as more listings come back up, hopefully it will get back down to 15 somewhat, but I don't think it can, it can get lower than 15 again. And the final card I want to talk about today is Demonic Jewel Dragon Drajeweled from Set 7. This is one of the newer Dark State's boss units with the capability to reduce your opponent's vanguard's power to 1. Meaning, if your opponent does happen to check the over-trigger before this attacks, this will negate the over-trigger entirely and force your opponent to just guard as they normally would against this card. There is a $9 listing with a $5 price tag on shipping, but then it's $14 overall. So it is falling out somewhat, and set 10 has the potential to bring this card some more support, so keep that in mind. How, far, how much farther this can fall out, I'm not sure, as you've also got other support cards which are falling out as well, but not by too much. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And for those of you who will be going to LA for Worlds, have fun. For those of you participating, good luck to you. And I will see you guys next time.